So today I'm going to share uh, my view of accounting and how it has evolved and where it's going. We're in an evolution right now and a new renaissance. And I want to share because whenever anyone brings up that NFTs or blockchains are dying or dead, I know with every fiber of my being that that's not the case. I first encountered Bitcoin in 2011 on one of those forums that you go to find shady products to crack into products that you're not supposed to. And when I found it, I had already been in my accounting career for over a decade. And I am quite the nerd for accounting and technology. I'm neurodivergent, so I'm a little awkward, but I'll <laughs> and I took on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a hyper focus from then on. Fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at that. Um, I started talking about it and I started digging into it and I could see immediately how it applied to my accounting career and the ledgers and everything that goes into accounting and reporting that every company does in our world. Um, at first it was just me talking and everyone thought I was a crazy lady on a soapbox. Then in 2016, there started to be actual crypto meetups where I could go meet up with fellow strange individuals and talk about these wild things. And now we have conferences all over the world and I'm able to come here and hang out with you guys, hundreds of thousands of people in this group. The other thing you should know about me is that I'm an artist and one of the things that's inescapable in art is discussing the Renaissance. And I was always fascinated with the Renaissance. Of course, it was interesting as far as science and art and technology evolution, but I wondered how those people felt when they were in the Renaissance. Like, how, how do you even know you're in a Renaissance? Did they have any idea of the impact of the things that they were working on and what that would mean for our society right now? Uh, I messed up slides. So how do we even know, how do we even measure Renaissance? A lot of people, when the personal computers came out, thought we were in a digital Renaissance and all of these things were gonna change the way we lived. And it did, it very much did. But I would argue that in the more recent, probably four years, we've had a lot more of the indicators that you can see, hindsight is 2020 when you look at them. And the big indicators back in the European Renaissance was social, political, and intellectual transformation. There were also changes in the methods and means of the communication. There were shifts in how we view ourselves and our capabilities. And shared values of society evolve. And the way I like to look at this is almost like a snake right before it sheds its skin. It just doesn't fit in the skin that it's in. And so it sheds that and becomes a new creature. And I think that we are approaching that right now. And you can look through the accounting lens at the Renaissance. There's a bunch of different ways that you can look at it through science or technology. Um, and, but the, through, specifically through the accounting lens, you can see these three epochs. And they are the difference between the means of our communication and the methods, the timeliness or the time span that the communications cover, and also the access or the ability to utilize the information. And back in the Stone Age, or the, the old days, everything was handwritten. You only had current information, because it was all just in one ledger, written out very succinctly. Then you see these stars down at the bottom, and what these are is when technology changed the entire way that we do things. And that first yellow star, what happened, is in 1299, someone came up with double entry accounting because before it was just a ledger. And then almost 200 years later, they came out with the printing press. 
And what this allowed was for that idea of the double entry accounting to permeate through the world. And when that happened, large corporations and organizations and governments such as the Medici's and these large governments that we have now were able to form. And because they were able to form and get larger, there was more money to be had. And that money is what fueled all of the scientific, artistic, and advancement research because they had a lot to flow around. And right now, that yellow, that white, air, that white star, that is where we're looking at technology coming in. We've had the computers invented. Now we have blockchain. And triple entry accounting was actually brought about by Yujiri Idari in 1989. And then Satoshi came out with, a, with blockchain, with the white paper in 2008, and now we have Ethereum in 2015. And now we have AI. I'm not even going to touch on AI, but now we have AI playing into this. Um, and we haven't realized, we haven't been able to like, make blockchain work on super large scales yet. Because on a small scale, blockchains are not really much more efficient than, say, a database. But when you have the entire web of a community or the world on these blockchains, that's when you really see the efficiencies of scale. So I'm going to go through these really quickly. This is single entry accounting. This is what we had before. And it was in 1498. And you can see it's just like what you do in your checkbook. Or I don't do in my checkbook, but you should do in your checkbook. And, but that's not really suitable for a large business, say an AIG or a multinational corporation. They just can't keep track of the books. And it's also, while it does, well, when you get to double entry accounting, there is mechanisms that help you see when you've made errors. If you book something to wrong accounts, you can find that. But it doesn't protect uh, against nefarious characters. You can have, there's lots of fraud that happens all the time in accounting and just errors. People just don't know what they're doing. And there's not a really easy way to audit this. Like, we have thousands and thousands of auditors that go through and dig through these numbers. So then we have triple entry accounting, which is blockchain accounting. Now, the difference between triple entry accounting and double entry and single entry accounting is that they are, um, no one has to make these entries. These, are, these happen automatically on the blockchain as soon as someone makes the entry. So all you have to do is query it. I'm going to rush through because I'm going too slow, apparently. Um, and NFTs are another technology of this. NFTs are actually not the art. They are an accounting record of all the activity. And there's going to be more types of NFTs as we come up with ways to use them. Now we have nested NFTs and soul-bound NFTs. And all of these are going to serve functions for what we need them to do in our coming society. Um, accounting touches everything. And you'd be surprised how much accounting is in the world. There's like $247 billion spent every year by companies for accounting. And this is set to replace all of those because they won't be needed because it's automated. And entire businesses will streamline to function in a smart contract, right? You don't need a whole business behind you to issue this policy because it could be done as a smart contract. And they are implementing it of their own accord. They're committing to their own demise because there's only so often so much that they can cut expenses or do planned obsolescence to appease their shareholders because they have to show growth every year but you can only sell so many widgets every year to so many people so they're going to willingly take this on and streamline all of their business functions over time and make themselves obsolete so nfts are inevitable <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time.